I'm just going to be reading from this passage, which is, let me show you, that's my tight. Um, here we go. Oh, really bad periscope, you see, because I'm trying to do it on my own, holding an umbrella in the rain and oh, holding a book, which I can't focus on. There we are. The Society of the Future. So this is the chapter at the end of On Art and Socialism called The Society of the Future. And it's William Morris's visions of the future. And I thought they were particularly um, relevant um, today. So I'm going to read that. OK. Um, so he says on page 183 of this edition, well, now I will try to draw these discursive remarks to a head who's been discussing things all the way through the book. And I will give you a more concise and complete idea of the society into which I would like to be reborn. It is a society which does not know the meaning of the words rich and poor, or the rights of property, or law, or legality, or nationality. A society which has no consciousness of being governed, in which equality of condition is a matter of course, and in which no man is rewarded for having served the community by having the power given him to injure it. It is a society conscious of a wish to keep life simple, to forego some of the power over nature won by past ages in order to be more human and less mechanical, and willing to sacrifice something to this end. It would be divided into small communities varying much within the limits allowed by due social ethics, but without rivalry between each other, looking with abhorrence at the idea of a holy race being determined to be free and therefore contented with a life not only simpler but even rougher than the life of slave owners, division of labour would be, be habitually limited. Men and women too, of course, would, take, would do their work and take their pleasure in their own persons and not vicariously. I think that's particularly interesting, really, when you think how much we live through experience through social media, as we're doing now. So no vicarious pleasure. But direct pleasure. The social bond would be habitually and instinctively felt so that there would be no need to be always asserting it by set forms. I think that possibly has some resonance as well for the use of social media. The family of blood relationship would melt into that of the community and of humanity. The pleasures of such a society would be founded on the free exercise of the senses and passions of a healthy human animal, so far as this did not injure the other individuals of the community, and so offend against social unity. No one would be ashamed of humanity or ask for anything better than its due development. But from this healthy freedom would spring up the pleasures of intellectual development, which the men of civilization so foolishly try to separate from sensuous, sensuous life and to glorify at its expense. Men would follow knowledge and creation of beauty for their own sakes and not for the enslavement of their fellows. They would be rewarded by finding their most generous work growing interesting and beautiful under their hands without their being conscious of it. The man who felt keenest the pleasure of lying on the hillside under a Russian tent among the sheep on a summer night would be no less fit for the enjoyment of a great communal hall with all its splendours of arch and column and vault and tracery. Nor would he who took to heart the piping of wind and washing of the waves as he sat at the helm of a fishing boat be deadened to the music, to the beauty of art made music. It is workmen only and not pedants who can produce real vigorous art. And amidst this pleasing labour and the rest that went with it would disappear from the earth's face all traces of the past slavery. Being no longer driven to death by anxiety and fear, we have, should have time to avoid disgracing the earth with filth and squalor and accidental ugliness would disappear along with that which was the mere birth of fantastic perversity. The utterly base doctrine, as Carlyle has it, that this world is a cockney nightmare, that's cockney with a small c, would be known no more. But perhaps you th may think that society being thus happy and at peace, its very success would lead it to co corruption once more. 
Yes, that might be if men were not watchful and valiant. There's a word you don't hear much, isn't it? Nowadays, valiant. But we have begun by saying that they would be free, and free men are bound to be responsible. And that means that they shall be watchful and valiant. The world be, will be the world still, I do not deny it. But such men as I have been thinking of will surely be fitter to meet its troubles than the dwellers in our present muddle of authority and unconscious revolt. <laughs>